happy Thanksgiving every day. Confidence, it grows when you're in the presence of someone that is uh, God sent. Confidence, it grows over time. Boldness is because there's somebody around you that can unlock a lot of God's characteristics in you. Like an Elijah, like somebody like a Samuel. Remember, it was David running from Saul. And here is Samuel. Giving him boldness and confidence. In the same place where he's trying to avoid and get out. Confidence grows when you're around a person that God has assigned to your life. Now, confidence, it is the Lord increasing your ability to not be afraid of people. Confidence is God increasing your ability to not be afraid of people. Opposition can be a scary thing. Because when you carry peace, you want everyone else to be peaceful. When you carry joy, you want everyone else to be joyful. And when you carry surrender, you want everyone else to be surrendered. But opposition is a revelation that you're in position. Opposition is a revelation that you're in position. You know that you are where God wants you to be. When Satan starts to fight you to get away from there. 
when God told Elijah to stay by the brook Cherith, the brook Cherith carried many temptations, whether you know it or not. Because opposition also births options. And options is a curse. Options produce double-mindedness. Options break you away from commitment. Options uh, destroys the passion to focus. Options produce scattered thinking. There's a lot of one-liners that I'm giving to you here that you can take and you can write it down. Even if you have to watch the replay, what I'm saying to you is what I hear God say to me. And so if you take these words and you hide them in your heart, they will speak to you when you get around situations, events, people, circumstances. You're going to hear uh, because the Holy Spirit is a tape recorder. When he speaks, he'll record it in your soul. And when your soul encounters things in life, you'll hear him. You'll hear my voice a lot. Because I am Jesus to you. I play the part of Jesus in your life. So Jesus will often speak to you through my voice. You'll hear me talking to you. You'll hear me laughing with you. That's really Jesus, but he using my voice because you're in common with my voice. Because I've been assigned to you. Whoever is assigned to you has authority to design you. Whoever is assigned to you has authority to design you, to design how you respond, to design how you think, to design your imagination to design the way that you operate. Even if you're in a female body, because in the anointing and the glory of God, there's no male or female. Think about that. In the anointing of God and the glory of God, there's neither male nor female. That's what the Bible says, neither male nor female, Jew nor Greek. All that stuff goes away. There was two people, but one name in the book of Genesis. There was two people in the garden. There was one name. She was named after her man of God. She had his name on her. She had his name on her. That's how God intended it. Notice when she sinned, now she got her own name. That's a curse. Because now she has an identity of insanity. Now she's a victim of double mindedness. Now her accessibility to Satan has been intensified. Now she has no covering, no spirit of God hovering over her. Even she wore the name and this is how God created man. He created man and then he had everybody wear the name of that man. Everybody was Adam. Guess what? Do you know? Nobody ever sinned. Everybody was Adam. Watch. God was so disapproved of different names. That when uh, the woman sinned, God didn't even name her. The Bible said Adam named her. <laughs> I'm full of wisdom. I, I can't stop. I won't stop. <laughs> I got wisdom for days. Wisdom for tomorrow. Wisdom for the new year. Wisdom for 2019. Wisdom, 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 wisdom. Wisdom. Now look at this here. 
Look at Genesis. Look at Genesis. Wake yourself up, man. You heard the tweet of bird. Tittering, tittering. You heard the tittering, tittering. Wake yourself up. Some of y'all up on the line, tether. Stop pitting me next to your chest. <laughs> Stop pitting me next to your chest. Get me up off of your bosom. Get me up off of your cleavage. <laughs> People be taking me all over the place. You be in the bathroom. Hey, come on. Hey. La 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 la. <laughs> People be walking past the door, think somebody in the house. Think somebody in the house, cause <laughs> I'm talking in the background. They're like, who the When you watch me, put your fingers down. La 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 la. Is the season to be jolly? Fa la 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 la. People hating. Because they come from Satan. Fa la 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 la. Is the season to be jolly? La 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 la. Now, your confidence grows when you get around your divine connection. Your divine connection will never destroy your confidence. They'll employ your confidence. They'll give your confidence an assignment. They'll give your confidence an assignment because every instruction that your divine connection will give you will require your faith to be stretched. Your faith has to be exercised before God can work out all things together for your good. You understand this? If he work out all things together for your good and you don't got faith, you can mess up the ligament of his plan. You don't want to mess up the ligament of God's plan. Don't mess up the ligaments of God's plans. Don't mess up the joints, the marrow, the bones. You notice what God told Eli Ezekiel. Can these bones live? So I, I want you to see this. Bones have life in it. Bones have the ability to carry the anointing. Bones have the functionality to step into the glory of God. So watch this. When Ezekiel heard God say, can these bones live? Meaning that God wanted to pit his anointing in people's bodies, in their bones, in their joints. In their connections. In their connections. Because you know that your bones is connected to each other. He wanted to pit his life in all your relationships, all your connections, everybody you associated with, everybody that you talk with. He wanted only people in your circle that will speak life. Can these bones live? Can they give life? That's what you need to study about the bones that you that you talk with. Is those bones giving you life? If you if those bones not giving you life, you don't need those bones in your life. Huh? If those bones are in your phones, get a new number. If those bones are in your phones, get a new iCloud. <laughs> you notice when Jesus was on the cross, they couldn't 
break his bones. The Bible said none of his bones was broken. Because Satan had no power over Jesus and his atmosphere and his connections and what he let in his soul and what he let in his spirit and what he let in his mind. Every conversation, every imagination, every decision, every thought, every person that he allowed to be close to him. It was all life. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and life. John 6, 63. It was all life. He was life. He is life. So none of his bones was broken. It's right there in the Bible. None of Jesus's bones was broken. Because Satan had no power to disconnect him from being who he was and hearing what he was supposed to hear and doing what he was supposed to do in any way, shape or form. Elisha, his bones. It was Elisha's bones that when they put that man down on Elisha's bones, that the man rose up from the dead. There's an anointing in the bones. Here's the secret. That's why God will use people that got skeletons in their closet. Because the anointing is in the bones. What the devil meant for your evil, he'll turn it around for your good. That's why you never be ashamed of the shame that Satan caused you in the past. Because can these bones live? There's an anointing in the bones. There's an anointing in the skeletons that you once possessed in the closet. Now you have a new closet where you're receiving a new deposit. Now you have a new closet where you pray and communicate with God. You don't stray and communicate with demons. Can these bones live? There's an anointing in the bones. So when people try to bring up your bones, remember that this is why God is even anointing me. Because he needed some bones. He just took the death of these bones and he raised it up and gave it what it needed to have, which is his power and his life. See, the man was dead. But when he touched Elisha's bones, he received supernatural resurrection. God will always send a man of God to you with a double portion. Because remember what the scripture say in Isaiah 61. He'll give you double for your shame. How could God give me double without having somebody in my life that don't have the double portion on them? So here's the powerful thing about this. When the Bible says he'll give you double for your shame, God will make sure as well with provision and finances and all that he's going to increase that he'll send somebody that is an Elisha that has a double portion in their possession to bring you out of your shame so that you could walk in the double, to teach you how to walk in the double, to anoint you to walk in the double, to prepare you to walk in the double, to uh, disciple you to walk in the double. I'll give you double for your shame. I'm going to connect your dead man's bones to Elisha's bones. And when your dead bones, because the man was dead, connects with Elisha's bones, you're going to rise up from your dead place. The wages for sin is death. You're going to rise up from your dead place. Legion was amongst the dead. You're going to rise up from your dead place. None of Jesus' bones could be broken because his bones was carrying the life for you and me. So no demon could have break off that life supply that was going to be released to us. That's why John chapter one, verse 12 said to as many as receive him, he gave them power to become sons of God because that life was never broken off. It was never cut off and it never will be cut off. Now, what you want to catch that God told Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. So you have to prophesy to your bones. 
You have to tell your body that you're going to serve the Lord daily, that you're going to finish your assignment daily. You have to tell your body that you're not going to get weary, that you're not going to give place to the devil, that you're not going to quit, that you're not going to be distracted, that you're not going to put your hands to the plow and look back, that you're not going to be Lot's wife. You need to get your bones in submission to the anointing of God so that it won't yield to the foolishness of feelings, emotions, because always remember this, what you are seeing is deciding your emotions. Now, saints, I got a whole wisdom door. I got wisdom doors on this line that you want to watch the replay so that you can jot these down from the beginning to the end. This really a wisdom impartation. I'm dealing with strong revelatory things that you can apply, that it will edify and give you a supply. Financially, mentally, emotionally. What you are seeing is deciding your emotions. Your sight decides what you feel. If you remember, it was Elisha. It was his servant that saw the Syrian army. So he became fearful. Look, his sight of the Syrian army produced the emotions of dread. Imagine that. What he saw in his head produced dread. Your mind is not always divine. Sometimes your mind is blind. The more that you walk in the spirit, you put glasses on your soul to see Jesus again. The more you walk in the spirit, you put glasses on your soul to see your promised land again. See, the men that went with Joshua and Caleb saw the giants. Joshua and Caleb saw God. So they responded with fear because of the giants. They, Joshua and Caleb responded with boldness because of God. The children of Israel saw Goliath. David saw the Lord. So they got defeated by Goliath because they was focused on Goliath. You'll always be defeated by the enemy that you pay attention to. I'm going to say this to you again. You'll always be defeated by the enemy that you pay attention to. None of the children of Israel couldn't, they couldn't defeat Goliath. It wasn't because Goliath could not be defeated, but because they was paying more attention to him than God. What you study becomes your buddy. What you study becomes your buddy. Even if it's toxic. Even if it's illegal, meaning you're trespassing against God. Whatever you study becomes your buddy. You're in covenant with your concentration. <laughs> you in covenant with your con concentration. Whatever you're concentrated on, you're in covenant with that. You're in a you're in a relationship with your imagination. You ever knew that? You're in a relationship with your imagination. Your imagination is in a, 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 a uh, dialogue with you. So watch this. The Lord taught us through Apostle Paul, you have to cast down imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So watch this. Your imaginations, because it's so free-willed, it has the tendency to search for negativity. So what, 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 what the Lord said, I'm going to give you the power to cast it down. Why? Because 
Lucifer was cast down. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Lucifer was cast down. So, so there is a department of your imagination called Lucifer. There's a department of your imagination that's called Lucifer. Remember, they are called fallen angels, fallen angels, fallen angels. So for them to be fallen mean that they was cast down. So everybody has a department of your imagination that has to be cast down because that department of your imagination is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why you have to be careful what you let yourself see or what you search for. Curiosity can destroy divine velocity and curiosity is the secret weapon that Satan uses to distract you from the momentum at which you are going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Karamando correve karama karamandi roko rata paramandi orreve. All curiosity is not divine. Write that down. All curiosity is not divine. All curiosity is not divine. Some curiosity disconnects you from divine. And you know that John chapter 15 in the gospel declares that without Divine, you can do nothing. So imagine when curiosity disconnects you from the vine, the vine and you are the branches, your branch, huh? Huh? Your branch can no longer be nourished. It can no longer stand. It will be cut off. Your branches can be cut off. You don't want to become a branch that's cut off. Because your curiosity disconnected you from the vine. Your offense disconnected you from the vine. Let me say this. I heard the Lord speak this. I heard the Lord speak this to me before I got on here. Do you know what Jesus said to me? He said, son, patience is not a command. It's a suggestion. Uh... Jesus told me before I got on here. He said, patience is not a command, it's a suggestion. He says, son, look in the text. Look what it's saying, James. Let patience have her perfect work. He wasn't commanding you. He was just suggesting to you. Uh, uh, suggesting, uh, suggesting to you. And, and remember this, and the Lord spoke this to me. Uh, divine suggestions birth divine progressions. Divine suggestions birth divine progressions. Do you, write this term down. Write, write, write this term down. Suggestion seeds. Suggestion seeds. They are, these are seeds that God don't command you to sow. He just give you money amounts. Daughter, I think you should sow $100 today. Son, I think that you should sow $200 today. Son, I think that you need to sow for your wife because she's about to be attacked. Daughter, I think that you should sow for your husband because I I'm about to do something different in y'all life and he going to be rebellious if you don't put this seed in the ground. I need to crush the head of the serpent out of his mind. I need to get this seed as a point of contact for me to start messing up his friendships, because these not really his friends. And they speaking wrong things to him and is messing up you. Suggesting seeds. I know that your daughter about to get sick. I need you to sow because when she do get sick, I'm going to use the seed as a memorial to connect that seed to healing. I know your son about to go into a rebellious state. I need that seed so that I could use that seed as a form of honor. I respond to honor. Solomon sold a thousand burnt offerings and God said, what do you want? Suggestion seeds. God ain't commanding you to sow all the time. Sometimes God just suggests to you. That's spontaneous sowing. That's another realm. You can't enter into multimillionaire status from the glory of God, from the anointing of God, from the power to get well until you move in spontaneous sowing. Some of y'all already in it. 
spontaneous sowing, these are from suggestion seeds. This just the Lord coming to you and giving you suggestions. He not commanding you to go lay your hands on that person that's sick, but he might suggest to you and say, daughter, um, your child got a fever. Pitch your hands on them and say in the name of Jesus, fire. I command your body to be made whole. It's not a command. It's just a suggestion. Here's the powerful thing about this. Suggestions is God sneakily giving you his wisdom in servant form. <laughs> I, I, I want you to write that down and remember that. I want you to write that down and remember. Suggestions is Jesus giving, he's sneakily giving you his wisdom in servant form. He not talking to you like a teacher. He talking to you as if he's your equal. He not really letting you know that he advanced. He giving you just a suggestion. Maybe you should do this. But he not operating as if, hey, I'm the dominating force. You better do it. A suggestion is God sneakily giving you his wisdom in servant form. Ain't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? Huh? Huh? How many of y'all are catching this? If you catching this, I want you to shout glory. Ma karamando correve karama. Raba soramando correve. Repe karapa koranto corre. Rapa soramando. If you get in this, I want you to shout glory. Are you getting this? Are we still clear? How many of y'all can see me? The wisest man is the attentive man. The wisest man is the submissive man. The man that honors another man will never be broke. The test of every man is the ability to serve another man that God esteems high in his presence. Any man that passes the test of servanthood will not lack wealth. Any man that passes the test of servanthood will not lack wealth. Solomon served David. Elisha served Elijah. Joshua served Moses. Adam served the animals. You ever thought about that? Adam served the animals. Think about this. Adam served the animals. What did God say? He brought the animals and he told uh, he told Adam, name them. Huh? <laughs> Are you catching this, saints? He told Adam to name the animals. Adam served the animals. Because as long as he was obeying God, they had their food as well. That's why the Bible said that the earth is earnestly crying out for the manifestation of the sons, even the animals. So if animals was affected by the fall of man, how much more are they resurrected by the rise of man? You caught that? If they was affected by the fall, they are resurrected when we submit to our divine call. Servanthood is the magnet for wealth. There's a divine service. And there's a demonic service. You can serve Satan. You can serve God. There's a 
there's a uh, there's a servanthood that's in the neighborhood of God. Always remember this. There is a servanthood that is located in the neighborhood of God. Not every servanthood is located in the neighborhood of God. Not every servanthood. There are some services that are deemed as Martha's. That Jesus is not moved by it. Uh, that's why the Bible said that if the Lord don't build the house, those that build it labor in vain. That's a labor that God does not bring favor upon. Don't start a business and ask God to bless it. Ask God to bless you to do whatever he, he will as business for your life. Don't start a business and ask God to bless it. Ask God to bless you with wisdom. Ask God to bless you with understanding. So whatever business he wanted you to start, you'll do it. You have to wait to be great. If you debate, you'll stay in the same state. You have to respect the city of prayer before you can live in the state of wisdom. You have to respect the, the city of wisdom before you can live in the state of abundance. There's a realm where God makes you wealthy and there's a realm where God keeps you wealthy. Inconsistency produces God's regrets. Write that down, man. Write that down. Inconsistency produces God's regrets. What happened in Genesis? The Bible said that he, he, he repented that he made man. Wait a minute. How is God repenting here? He's saying, I wish I didn't make that decision. Because look at how they're responding to my goodness. Look at how they're responding to my favor. Don't disrespect the favor of God. Inconsistency produces God's regrets. Let me tell you something. God forgets your sins. But don't let your repeat of that same character operating in you currently remind him. That's just meat for the mature. That's just meat for the mature. Don't remind God of your foolishness by redeveloping your foolishness. You will always know what you did that made God distant from you. You will always know what you did that made God close to you because both of them carry the symptoms of his response. If you do something wrong that God don't want you to step over that boundary, you'll feel the response. Don't disconnect from the instruction that brings you joy. Don't disconnect from the divine instruction that brings you joy. Don't disrespect from the don't disrespect the divine instruction. Don't don't disconnect from the divine instruction that brings you joy. Don't ignore what God wants you to explore. Don't ignore what God wants you to explore. If God lets you see it, he wants you to be it. God will send you a divine example before he increase you to a divine mantle.
God will send you a divine example on the earth before he increases you, he graduates you to a divine mantle. Don't disconnect from the divine instruction that brings you joy. The Lord will always let you see his symptoms when you do something that makes him happy. You'll feel the happiness behind it. Let me tell you something. When Satan attacks you, you'll find that your happiness will die concerning that. That's to let you know that it's not God. See, God's responsibility is when I do things that please his presence is to give me the fullness of joy so that when I have the fullness of joy, I can be accountable that when that fullness of joy is not there, I know that I'm being attacked by Satan. Oh, my God. Here's, here's, here's the powerful thing about this. Submission is my seed. Divine joy is my harvest. Joy is a reaction to my action that was an interaction with what God wants. Joy is a reaction to the action. That I did in interaction to what God wants. I don't know why some of y'all be asking me questions on here. This is not an interview. I'm not answering questions. I'm teaching. There's a time and a place for everything. I'm not answering no doggone questions. I got enough wisdom on here. If you can't understand the words that are coming out my mouth, if you can't understand this, you can't get jiggy with this, you're going to have to ask God to give you wisdom and understanding. I answer no questions. Y'all, y'all come on here. Don't come on here asking no doggone questions. This is not no interview. I'm teaching. Come on here asking no, no, no questions about, oh, oh, what did, nah, I ain't, this ain't no question. This ain't no interview. This ain't no newsstand. I ain't on no newsstand. I'm not no newsman. I ain't answering no questions. You can't understand the words coming out my mouth. Ask the Holy Ghost. And if he ain't responding to you, he just show you where you stand. People do that all the time. You be teaching them. Oh, well, what did what did what did the fuck? I'm going to send you to Tokyo. We're going to send you to Tokyo. God lets me see the joy I feel so that I would not leave my consistency in doing what I'm doing. He uses the joy to compel me to continue to do it. Now, I want you to see this. Joy is continual approval from God. I love that destiny. I, I love that definition. I love that definition. I want, if you take a note, write that down. Joy is God's continual approval, is the continual approval from God. So so here's the powerful thing about this. When I have joy, I'm experiencing God's continual approval. Okay? Here's the powerful thing about this. God will let me have a soul tie with this approval. So that when Satan is trying to get me off the path that God has for me, that soul tie can quicken me back. That's why you see David said, thy word. I was quickened by your word. You understand this? 
You understand this? I was quickened by your word. Here's the powerful thing about this. What God did was reminded David, remember the joy you felt when you danced for me. You almost went, you was half naked, you danced for me. You remember how you felt when you defeated Goliath. You remember how you felt when you destroyed the bear that was coming after the sheep. Remember how you felt when I called you to kill tens of thousands. God will always remind you of your anointed places. The devil will always remind you of your disappointed places. That's a wisdom door. Remember that. Write that down. <laughs> God will always remind you of your anointed places. Satan will always remind you of your disappointed places. Both, God is a reminder. So Satan is a copycat of what God does. He reminds you as well. How do you think the seven more wicked spirits come into your life? They can't just come into your life. They have to remind you of something that you have used, you, you used to do that was sinful. Are you catching this? It's something that you was doing. Huh? That was sinful. So Satan has to remind you. The same way God reminds you of things that you do that are victorious prosperous, things that you do that brings you into greater levels of liberty, things that you do that causes you to run and not be weary, walk and not faint, things that you do that causes you to experience instantaneous anointing. When I sow seeds, I experience the power of God instantly, but I, I, I understand the attitude of giving. The Bible says something real profound. If you give grudgingly, you can sow in obedience to God and still be miserable. Because your attitude has not been renewed by the spirit of the word of God. Or the spirit of God, the word of God. It has not been renewed. Your attitude has to be renewed so that you won't do a godly act in a demonic reaction. That's one of the most powerful things. I, I, I want y'all to stay with me. You want to be careful that you don't do a godly act in a demonic reaction. Because if your attitude has not been renewed, your fruit, your decision can be doing it while your attitude is rebelling against it. That's some powerful stuff. That's some powerful stuff. Do you know that your hands and your heart can be functioning at two different kingdoms at the same time? Your hand can be doing what God says while your heart is rebelling against the fact that you're doing what God says. And so you're doing it with the wrong spirit. <laughs> You're doing it with the wrong spirit. It's God having you do it, but because you don't really have a revelation or you're not even uh, humbling yourself. There's some people, they know God want them to sow. So when they sow, they're like, here, God. The sowing was a God decision. The attitude was a demonic decision. So there's a reason why God said, I love a cheerful giver because God's saying, I'm looking for somebody that I don't got to pressure you into doing what I say. You love doing it. 
Saints, that's the secret between me and other ministers. God increases your rank, not because you can preach good, not because you ask him to use you. He increased your rank. Here's the secret. He increases your rank because he sees that he don't have to push you to say things that's going to get you persecuted. He don't got to convince you to step out into the war and, and, and convince you that he going to protect you. He don't got to convince you to, to, to leave your father's house. He don't got to give you a million reasons, a persuasion of, of why you should get away from that relationship or why you should get away from that thought or why you should get away from that decision. You are a volunteer and, and watch this. You don't have an ounce of pride operating in you because God can tell you to do the most, what seeming, seemingly is the most uh, foolish thing and you'll still do it. I do that all the time. But see, this is how the anointing increases on me. By doing the foolish things. The anointing for divine foolish things. What the natural man will deem as Unnecessary. God will use that to make you legendary. What Satan will deem as unnecessary, God will use that to make you legendary. I'll never fit in with preachers. I'll never do it because I'm not just a preacher. I'm a friend of Jesus. And I'm not a friend according to association. I'm not a friend of Jesus because I'm associated with somebody. I'm a friend face to face with him. I'm a friend because I don't, I don't disrespect his authority in my life. I'm a friend because I don't need him to keep on reteaching me what he already taught me. If you tell me that this is what you want from me, Jesus, I don't need you to keep reminding me three weeks later. I heard your voice and I reverence your voice. I'm going to do it in the night, in the day, when the sun go down, when the sun come up. I'm going to do it all the time because you already gave me the privilege to know that you like it. I don't need you to keep on coming reiterating, reiterating me every minute. Oh, I, I, son, I, I, son, I want you to do it. No, you done told me. Why you got to repeat yourself? Don't let God have. Oh, let, let. write this down. Most times if God has to raise his voice. You have delayed him from raising your level in the spirit. Most times if God has to raise his voice, he can't raise your finances. If he got to raise his voice, he can't raise your anointing, your rank. Think about that. Procrastination agitates God. Procrastination agitates God. It irritates him. Procrastination is that you have the knowledge. But you're not responsible enough. To demonstrate that knowledge. Procrastination means that you have the knowledge but you're not mature enough to act out that knowledge. 
Knowledge is supposed to live in your mind. But give through your decisions. You understand this? Knowledge is supposed to live in your mind. But give through your decisions. You have to get what God teaches you out into your atmosphere. You have to get what God teaches you out into your uh, behavior. You have to get what God teaches you out into your responses, your characteristics, your personality. Don't delay that. And listen, anyone that cannot live at peace with what God is requiring of you is an enemy to your uh, your functionality anyway, your, fu your future anyway. They are, they are not really God sent. Huh? God makes decisions about people in your life when he sees that they take away your life that he's given to you. You understand this? So God will always make, he can make a detour if he wants. No relationship is, is, is divinely permanent. If you switch up, God will switch up on you as well. <laughs> Some people up there think, oh, God, you know, and when she shed it, when she shed it, when she shed it, he ain't going to do nothing. He ain't going to, he ain't going to none of that. And when she shed it, he, he, he shall shed it up. He, he shed it up. God put Adam together, say who God put together, no man break asunder. But look, God broke them to asunder. He broke both of them Negroes asunder. Both of them was eating a doggone mango and God said, pick the doggone mango down. <laughs> pick the daggone fruit down. You up there at the toilet tree, the, the fruit tree up there, the fruit cake. Listen, because of the fruit tree, now we got fruit cakes. We got tutti fruities, all nudies. Because of that fruit. Now, saints, of course, it wasn't an actual fruit. It was a decision they made of rebellion. Wop, bop, 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 bam, boom. <laughs> I need a hundred people to share this broadcast. <laughs> Whatever happened to him? Whatever happened to him? Psych, we don't care, man. <sighs> Little Richard. Tootie <laughs> fruity. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we got little children out there uh, listening to little Richard's songs. Huh? <laughs> little, after they done listen to little Richard's song, you were like, "Where you going, man, man?" To go get me some milk and cookies. <laughs> man, man, what you, what you, man, man, what you about to go do? What you about to go do, man, man? I said to go get me some milk and cookies. <laughs> Saints, I, I, I've seen some children like that. You don't even get mad. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you, sometimes Jesus lets you see stuff so that you can laugh. And saints, the world will say it's not true, but who gives a care? They don't know him anyway. Jesus will let you see stuff and laugh. I've seen stuff that God told me, son, don't get angry. I'm letting you see this so that you can laugh. I've seen men, chuck a boom. <laughs> chuck a boom. What, you, what, what is that supposed to mean? Is that some superpower? Chuck a boom. And saints, Saints, you know, <laughs> there's some men that walk just like this. 
You ever seen them in the line? <laughs> the, the, re, the register lady said, I need five dollars. He up there don't even want to get it because his stance is so serious. <laughs> he want to get his stance out so bad that it's so serious. Saints, when I got in ministry, I never had so much men call me pretty. I never, when I was a little boy, I never knew that I would see the day when men call me sexy. I never knew I was going to see the day. It's kind of weird to me. It make my stomach turn. I ain't used to that. I, I prefer if you if you say that, that you got some some sun on your chest and you got some uh, you got sun with yours. You, your neck ain't your neck ain't got no little loop right there. It ain't got no loop right there. If it got no loop, I expect you to have, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got no muscular, you know, neck, all that stuff. I don't expect to see a grown man tell me that I'm sexy. It's weird to me. It's weird to me. And and, and, and me and Jesus have had a conversation about it, Lord. I'm like, Lord, ah, I can't eat because <laughs> I'm thinking about why is another brother that got the same thing, the 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 thing. Why is he looking at the same version of himself and it arouses him? But his spirit is a spirit, is a spirit. But see, here's the thing. Do you think I, I don't turn them away? Because while they're watching me in that sense, they're still hearing the gospel. On the day of judgment, if they never repent, Jesus is going to say, hey, I knew you liked men. I let you see a man that according to your lust, you like that type of man. But I let you hear the gospel out of his mouth. Listen, some of you women need to know this. You are a woman of influence. The thing about it is, if God made you sexy, be sexy. People up there telling some, oh, you got to watch how you, let me tell you something. You better watch how God sees you. You better not hold back on God. You say, well, what the purpose for God to have somebody uh, 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 dress in a certain way? God do what he want. You think every man that listen to you is look, listening to you? <laughs> he got another communication going on sometimes. <laughs> and then there's some brothers talks. I marry a woman for her wisdom, her intellect. You's a dog on liar. But you you ain't always going to find a woman that's up the wisdom up to par. That's why God put you in their life. Some women have great abilities. They just don't know how to ever exercise it because they never met a man of wisdom. They never met somebody that was at a level to unlock them. Some of you women on here, you are great women, but you didn't really become great until you started hearing great things. And the great things just came into connection with the greater one that's on the inside of you because it's his voice and he telling you, hey, this is what you are. This is what you can do. This is what you can endure. This is what you can oppose. This is what you can stand up for. This is what you can say no to. This is what you can leave. This is what you can receive. Adam came out of God. The woman came out of Adam. What do that show you? Your man of God is connected to your womanhood. Bones. Remember I was talking about there's anointing in the bones. You see how all that go together? You see how all that go together? Bones. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Bones. God give you good looks as a woman? Yeah. You think every man gonna come to you? It's 
somebody came to me in confidentiality because they trust me. They're not really a daughter of my ministry, but they, they, they get a lot of encouragement and edification from me. But they said to me, oh, you know, it's like, you know, somebody, uh, they wanted to be with me, dot, dot, dot. And I prophesied to them as the Lord lives. I told them the person's name. I said, it's this person. They said, yeah. I said, I ain't got to say nothing. That, that's not an issue for me. I don't, I don't have to destroy nobody. I ain't got to do none of that. I said, this, I'm just letting you know that I know things. Because I never met you before. Me and you never spoke on the phone. Me and you never, uh, uh, I never smelled the mango breath that you carry. I ain't dealing with all of that. It, this, you, you might be bit to me. I don't know what you do. You might smell like feet. What? That ain't got nothing to do with me. You might be doing nails all day. Smelling manicured toes. Underlay, underlay, E-I-E-I. -E -I. Uh oh that could be you. Because that, that don't pay me no never mind. If you smell like feet, meet and greet, I still take several seats. It don't bother me none. But then she said, well, why? <laughs> why do you think that You know, he hearing on me. <laughs> I wanted to tell a girl, change your picture, girl. <laughs> you got to, you got a picture, you got to change like this here. You, what the, God, what you going to, God, when they click on the profile, <laughs> when they click on the profile, they got two jugs, they look at that right, <laughs> two milk jugs right there, two, 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 two baby factors right there. You, girl, you gonna have to change your picture. Just man, put a put a logo up. Pit Chick Fil A no logo. Pit McDonald's logo. Church's Chicken logo. Pit a KFC logo. Pit another logo. Pit Publix logo. Kroger's logo. Walmart logo. Kmart logo. Target logo. Krispy Kreme donut logo. McDonald's logo. Burger King logo. You got Pitt sign up there because uh, that's all he's seeing, sitting up there, sitting high and lifted up. Drawing all men unto me. <laughs> I, no, no, because the people need to know the solution now. Watch. You think a man going to hit on you if, if you ain't, you, go pit a blank picture, pit an egg like most of the people got on him. There's always talking stuff. They got an egg on their picture. Put the egg up. You see how many people going to hit on you. And now, when they see you, 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 you. <laughs> Men are visual. Men are visual. You need to remember this. Men are visual. A man will open a door for a stupid person because visually they look like wisdom. Why do you think David went with Bathsheba? It, Bathsheba didn't have no supernatural education about her. He went with her because of the visual. Was that not the truth? Bible showed that when God made the woman, it was good. <laughs> Adam forgot all about God. Think about that. Adam got whooped. He forgot all about God. Look, she gave him the apple. She gave him from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He didn't even say, girl, no, don't do that. Adam said, here, come on, come on. <laughs> what we going to do tonight? <laughs> girl, we naked. Girl, we naked tonight. Come on now. 
You ain't got to go to work on none of that, God. You ain't got to cook on none of that, God. We got the food up in the garden, God. We got the food up in the garden, God. <laughs> what we going to do tonight, now, there, God? What we going to do tonight, there, God? You turn around in a second. Let me yesterday, God, now. <laughs> You threw it around in the second night yesterday for me, not that girl. What you gonna do for me today, God? What you gonna do for me? I'm the OG. I'm the daddy. I'm the daddy tonight. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the daddy tonight. What you gonna do for me? Huh? What you gonna do for me after I eat this from the tree that not gonna eat but now that girl? You know, God told me not to mess with it, but I mess with it for you, girl, because you. He went on the ceiling yesterday, gal. Now look at this here. What you think? <laughs> this a head stance, gal. <laughs> and I ain't talking about no hot dog now, gal. I ain't talking about no hot dog, gal. You was at the head stand, gal. Now look at this here. What you... <laughs> what you think? Adam had lost his mind in the behind. <laughs> lost his mind in the behind. <laughs> she gave him the tree. He didn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, saints, let me, let me give you a little jokey joke. <laughs> Before they sinned, ain't no mosquitoes was binding while they were doing it. Well, a guy come on now, guy. <laughs> yeah, that's how, that's how you do it, that guy. Now look at this here. <laughs> there was no mosquitoes biting nobody. There was no ants. <laughs> there was no ants biting nobody. The weather condition wasn't fighting nobody. It was in the cooler. Everything was fine. It was just nice. It was just nice. Ain't nobody. The fan wasn't drawing nobody out. None of that. <laughs> Hey, the, the fan wasn't the fan wasn't taking nobody out of their element or none of that. <laughs> Dave, can we? <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all in your relationship, just like, <laughs> Babe, can we turn the air? <laughs> Be out of there. And so, what what happened if you got a cold blooded man? If he a cold blooded, man, that's a baby. Baby, can we, baby, can we turn the air? Out? Baby, can we turn the air? Out? It. Tell me, why I got to turn the air? Out? I'm cold blooded. No, because saints, I know some men that love the coldness. They, that's their flow. And ain't nothing wrong with that. That's just how their body operate. Some men will have you out there just, just, just freezing like a mug. You can't even feel your thoughts no more. <laughs> you can't even feel God no more. None of that. You got to remember if you saved because you can't feel none. And you be up there, they be asking you, how you doing? You be like, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> hey. <laughs> the, the old brother didn't have his denture cream that day. He was inside the car. <laughs> I'm good now. I'm good now. I'm good. I'm going back here. I'm going back here. Up there, colder than a mug. <laughs> <It's cold. laughs> Baby, can we turn the air off? <laughs> <It's>... 
<laughs> Baby, can we take the fan off? Can we? Can we? Cause the fan messing me up. <laughs> now, saints, I've never had this happen to me. All right, <laughs> but I just know prophetically. I know this prophetic. <laughs> Never had it happen to me, you know what I'm saying? And I pray it don't. I, I, now I'm I. I ain't making no provision for none of that. Not now, not never. Hmm. <laughs> it's so much jokes coming to me right now. <laughs> Cause my mind is animated. My mind is animated. <laughs> Because <laughs> the fan is on. Somebody turn the fan off. <laughs> now, look at this here. Now, <coughs> Adam, Adam, he lost his mind in the behind. And Adam, he ate from the very tree that God told him not to eat from. What do you think is going on here? Adam is experiencing... <laughs> uh, Adam is experiencing... an intoxication... of a wrong option. Remember, I was telling you that op options are curses. Bible said that he'll he'll take you down the straight and narrow road. Options is curses. When you got options, you become double minded. Your vision become cloudy. You become rowdy. You become distracted. Different passions arises up in you for things that God don't want you to pursue. That's what happens with options. Options make you delay what God wants for you to engage what God doesn't want. Options will postpone what the Lord really requested for you to fulfill. So he was in intoxication of a wrong option. You have to be very careful that you don't become intoxicated with wrong options. Things that will come to you that are not the will of God for you, daughter. It's not the will of God for your mind, son. It's not the will of God for your emotions, daughter. And the Lord don't want you to have nothing to do with it. And it's your job to never drink of the cup that is not your cross. Never drink of the cup that is not your cross. It's not what the Lord sent for you to carry. It's not supposed to be in your chapter Stop letting Satan overwrite what God has already written on the chapter of your day, on the chapter of your mind. Don't let him take his pen and become a friend to your distraction and succeed. Don't let him overwrite what God said. Protect the book Of your focus. Protect the book. Of your obedience. Protect the book. 
of your consistency. Consistency is proof that you have conquered vain imaginations. Write that down. Consistency is proof that you have conquered vain imaginations. Consistency is proof. Some of you all need to get the revelation that you already uh, excelled in consistency. You already conquered the enemy. Some of you all need to know this. You're not trying to conquer the devil. You already conquered him. Some of you are, you're not in bondage to a habit. You don't conquer that habit. You just need to renew your mind and get a revelation that you are already sitting down on the seat. You're not traveling to the seat. Don't function as if you're on the way to it when God puts you in the way of it. Don't function like you're on the way to it when God plants you in the way of it. Don't pray for a crown when you already got the crown. Don't pray for a, a robe when you are already wearing it. Be conscious of uh, Conscious of what's been given to you already so that you don't plead for it. Look what page 102, I just opened my brand new book. I wrote this this year. It's powerful. Look what it's saying, page 102. Weakness feeds off. You not feeding your spirit. Weakness feeds off of you not feeding your spirit. The flesh knows when you are not investing in prayer. And you are becoming a victim of prayerlessness. Whenever you stop chasing. After God, it brings forth curses in your thought life. Think about this, saints. <clears throat> Think about this. <clears throat> Whenever you stop pursuing God, it brings forth curses in your thought life. Imagine this, saints. That you could Karramando Korata Any day you do not seek God, there is a door open to the demonic realm. That's page 102 in my book. My Caranto. Karamande Korreve Rabasor Ramandio. Now, page 102 says that any day you do not seek God, there is a door open to the demonic realm. There's a door open to the demonic realm. There's a door open. To the demonic realm. Weakness feeds off of you not feeding your spirit. You got to feed your spirit for your mind to grow. You have to feed your spirit for your mind to grow. You have to feed your spirit.
for your mind to go, to grow. Your mind is an infant. But your spirit can make your mind an elephant. Remember that. We got so much wisdom doors on this line tonight, or this morning rather, on this happy Thanksgiving day. We give thanks to the Father. Now, remember that. Your mind is an infant, but your spirit can make it an elephant. You have to nurture your mind because your mind is so easily pruned to falling. Try to have a baby stand up. A baby will fall. It has to be nurtured, trained into walking. Your mind has to be trained into walking in the spirit, walking in the glory, walking in the supernatural. You got to be trained to even sow and obey God financially. See, some of you are, are already trained. So it's easy for you to catch on to what my spirit is saying, you already know communication. I ain't got to say nothing to you. You already know. Because you're trained in the same vein of the life of God, the blood of Jesus, that's, that's been given to us for us to know the mysteries of God. You have to train your mind how to uh, stick with Elijah. You have to train your mind how to stick with Elijah. It's a beautiful thing to be possessed by the spirit of your prophet. It's a beautiful thing to be possessed by the spirit of your prophet. Elisha understood this. Elisha was possessed by the spirit of Elijah. And look what he did. He destroyed Jezebel's uh, altar. He destroyed um, Ahab's altar. Remember, he gave the anointing to Jehu. And J watch this. Elisha gave the anointing to the young prophet. Then he gave the anointing to Jehu. What's going on here? He's transferring the power that is doubled on his life. Two different times. He gives it to the young man for the young man to give it to Jehu. Powerful. That's how much the oil was strong on Elisha. But what happened? He was possessed by the spirit of his prophet. It's powerful. Very powerful. When you're possessed by the spirit of your prophet, the Bible said, Moses laid his hands on Joshua and he received the spirit of wisdom. When he laid his hands, Joshua is now carrying the spirit of Moses. What did Moses do? He took off his spirit and gave it to 70 elders. So beautiful, so, so powerful. And, and, and here's the glorious thing about this. This realm is not, a, is not operating in everybody. The Lord picks and chooses. He knows who is legit, ready to do such a thing. He knows who to call on. He knows who to uh, anoint for that. Not everybody. But he handpicks who is validified, who's qualified in his eyes, what he believes that he needs for that type of functionality. And you can win the heart of God just through pursuit and attentiveness. You can win the heart of God through unselfishness, sacrifice, and the carelessness of your reputation. The carelessness of your reputation is so powerful because it opens you up to the voice of the Holy Spirit in another dimension when you are careless about your reputation. When you're holding on to your reputation, 
you can't serve God fully. You can't even serve God because that reputation will become your God. Oh, I don't want people to see me do this. Oh, I don't want to see people say me, see, see me say this. But we watch Jesus. He said things. Jesus did things. The carelessness of your reputation. He thought it not robbery to be made equal with God. But he made himself of no reputation. The carelessness of your reputation. The carelessness of your reputation. You can't be the woman that God wants you to be if you care about your reputation. You can't be the man that God wants you to be if you care about your reputation. This Bible told us that if we let Jesus take us over, men was going to speak evil of us. You shock? Oh, but they call me a name. Uh, uh, uh. All right, Billy. You're going to time out. Billy Jean, you are going to time out. I'm going to time out, Billy Jean. Enough of this. The Bible already let you know that that was going to happen. <laughs> the Bible already told you that this was going to take place when you let the Lord start ruling you. So when it happens, don't retreat. Some people hide. The Bible also said that they get offended when persecutions come. You see that all the time. So here's what happens. When God starts fulfilling what he said was going to happen when you do obey God, people get mad when the devil children start coming at them. When their family members start asking them questions, when people start talking, you going to go to hell for them with their broke self. You know how much of your family that you see today that you're going to see in hell when you cross over? A whole plethora of them. Uncles, aunties, you're going to see all of them burning. You say, oh, prophet, I can't see that. No, no, no. When your mind is holy, when your mind is synced, with God in sync with God, you can see people in hell and not be bothered because you're going to know that they are the enemies of God. You're not going to look at them like that carnal way you look at people. A lot of times you look at people from a carnal state. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my great uncle. We are, we are all, and you're looking from a natural point of view. When you look in the supernatural, you'll see with the eyes of God. This person never loved Jesus. Look at all Jesus did for them. Look at how Jesus was calling out to them. Look how they ignored him willfully. Proud heart, arrogant spirit. Didn't even take the time to say thank you for none of the times that Jesus protected them from car accident, house fires, shootings, all those different things Jesus was doing for them, the angels he was sending to them, and they never even told him thank you. They never surrendered. They never submitted. They never loved on him. They never spent time with him. They never received him. You're going to know from the point of view of God concerning them. You're not going to look at them the same. If you see your daughter in hell, your biological daughter, you think you're going to be up in heaven? Ah! No, you're going to, you, you bald head bastard. That's why I was up there trying to tell you. It's your broke self. Did your hair every dog on night. Pit doo doo braids, all of that, but they were clean. I picked clean doo doo braids on you. You was fine. You had Rastafarian hair, and you were still good. All right? You still got hit on. I saw them little letters in your book bag that I never told you about. You forgot to throw them away. You forgot to throw them away. Saints, I remember one time I. I, I, you know, I used to get a lot of letters for them girls. They, they were some hoochie mamas. <laughs> Man, I was in, I was in, I was, I, I was in a school full of hoochies and something else. Now I wasn't, I was in a hood school. There was white girls there. There was all type of girls, but they, I was in the hoochie zone. And they, they were just all on me. I was like, girl, stop it! Listen, let me be myself. 
Let me be myself. Come on, come on now. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Calm down. We got, we got 7,000 other brothers that not, didn't bow that need to dust in this. Come on. Got 7,000 other brothers that didn't bow that need to dust in this. Come on, stop. Get you one. Get you one. Stop. Get you one. Get you one. Stop. Get you one. Get you one. I'm not on repeat. Don't go in and go out. Stop. Get you one. Get you one. So they will write you letters. My mistake was I forgot that my mother was a woman and women are nosy. I forgot. I forgot that all women are nosy. I don't care who they say they is. They nosy to some degree. It might be 1% are nosy. It might be 2% are nosy. It might be 10% of nosy. It might be 99% of nosy. But it's a nosy somewhere. Your nose is long somewhere. You might got a short nose in real life, but you got a long nose in nosiness. You got a long nose. A nose probably ain't got no snot. Ain't got no hot shot. But it's a nose, it's a long nose that somebody never saw before until they get around you. There's a nose that you ain't exposed to everybody. Every woman got a nose. Your nose might be shorter than others, but it's long somewhere and it's strong somewhere. You got strong nostrils somewhere. So what, brothers, don't believe them. You meet a woman, don't say, I ain't nosy. I'm just at peace with mine. Listen. A woman will act like she's sleeping. Then she get up. She, <laughs> hey, hey, hey! I heard snoring. Hey, I heard snoring. What's what? The, hey, what's hey? What's this? Every woman is nosy. Even if you one percent are nosy, you got that one percent of nosy down pat. <laughs> so I forgot that I had a mama and all women are nosy so I messed around had all these letters piled them up put them in my backpack messed around fell asleep felt a tap at my feet I thought it was the angel underneath the juniper tree looked up I saw big mama now my mama wasn't big But one of the things we're talking about, but now look at this. Don't think about it. Now look at this here. Let me tell you something. Good for me, smart on my behalf. I didn't write nothing back. I just took the letter and just kept it for for uh uh for meditational purposes. For, for meditational uses. Now, let me tell you something. Look at this here. So I had a whole busload of papers <laughs> from different hoochie mamas. <laughs> While I was a virgin boy from a bunch of hoochie mamas. Now, look at this here. <laughs> Some of them drew their tongue. I don't know how they did <laughs> Yeah, what you got? You got the you got the guy, guy, you go wild girl. You got got you better get you some orange juice or something. Now look at this here. Now my mo- <laughs> my mother went through my stuff. Man, I ain't know she was gonna do it. I ain't know she was going to do it, and I ain't even think about it. My mind, I thought they had threw it out. I wasn't even thinking about it because I ain't do nothing with it. I ain't do nothing with it, but she went through my stuff and saw these girls telling bop, 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 rap, pop, pop. All of that. Not ta 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 so, my mother asked me, she said, what is this? I said, what is what? <laughs> what? What's going on? What, what, what they did to me? What they did to me? I can't see. Mother, mother can you pray for me? I can't see right now. What is this? <laughs> what is this? 
I said, I don't know what you're talking about. What? What? I don't know what you're talking I don't know what you're talking about. Ma, what you talking about? I, Ma, can I got some time off? My head hurting. I don't think I can go to school tomorrow. Can you take me to the doctor? Saints, you gotta, you got you gotta, you, listen, you, when you know that your parent might whoop you, you gotta find out a way to get them to sympathize with you, even though they ain't gonna do it. Cause when a, when a, when a, when a, when a, when a parent got whooping in their mind, <laughs> it don't matter what you say. It don't matter if you telling the truth and, and watch how many of y'all know them parents that when both you and your sibling got into something, your sibling did you wrong. They whooped both of y'all. <laughs> hey, like, like your, she was whooping the other one. You was up in the back eating some cheese while she was whooping them. Yeah, Eldred. See, I told your mama was gonna get you, then she turned around. Whoosh. Hey, 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 what you what, what you come back? What you come back here for? No, keep on going over there, mama. Don't don't come over here. You hit the wrong person. I ain't Eldred. Eldred over there. She now she whooping you. <laughs> well, this is for you up there again in the sun with Eldred. He ain't he ain't fight you for no reason. He fought you because you was up there fighting him. I know how you did. You disrespected me the other day. Last week when I told you to put the orange shoot down, you still ain't put the orange shoot down. you like, hey, hey, hey. They'll find stuff that you did weeks ago just so that they can whoop you today. When I put that doodle braid inside your hair, you up there told everybody in your school that you had doodle locks. You had diarrhea hair. I heard you, what you told me. The teacher told me I just ain't deal with you. Be beating you for stuff that you ain't even know existed. Like all these false accusations. Like, mama, you got a demon. You you got the prince of the power there, the accuser of the brethren fighting your life. I'm going to take you to the priest because you need deliverance. You, you're accusing your own child. And there's some of y'all, you have parents that wait until you wet. Now I'm talking about the good one, uh, when you in the shower. And you're about to come out the shower. <laughs> you're up there singing your song, Caroline. <laughs> you're singing the whole thing, Conia, and you're <laughs> You're singing the whole Stankonia album, Outcast. <laughs> you think you got it? Oh, she thinks you got it. <laughs> oh, you think you got it? She got it. She got it. <laughs> Come on here. <laughs> You're singing Andre 3000, all of them. <laughs> You're singing the whole outcast. <laughs> singing the whole outcast, <laughs> the whole Stankonia. All right. Now, <laughs> then they come in when you in the hour, you think not. While you wet up there. From the shower now. And beat you <laughs> Whoop you with a wet car, whoop, whoop you with a rag or something. <laughs> You'll be up in the shower up there singing all the time a song. Come on here. You think you got it? Oh, you think you got it? You got it? You got it? <laughs> and then you, you feel an atmosphere switch. Cause you, you know when somebody about to, when you about to get a whoop in your heart drop. No, it's like you don't see nothing, but you sense something. Your heart drop, and you start hearing your whoop down before it happened. And you start thinking about ways to get out. And you're like, why am I seeing all these images where I'm going to run here and run here? And she bring me here, then bring me there. I got that. 
you turn over and then you're like, then you then you, you you get darkness. It just you turn into the rapture. Tribulation period done started for you. <laughs> the mark of the beast done came. The mark of the beast done came is over. I got <laughs> And then say you got them other bad children that always trying to act mannish. They don't want you to let, they don't want to let you know that they hurting. Like their mother will hit them the hardest, a kapow. And everybody be laughing. <laughs> and they be trying to hold back their tears. <laughs> they be trying to hold back their tears to... They don't want nobody to know that they hurt, they injured. <laughs> and then there's another type of mothers. They are the mothers that beat you because you cried that they beat you. <laughs> when she, you ain't even seen her take a denture cream. I'm going to beat you just because you kept on crying when I called Sweet Willie over. Sweet Willie couldn't concentrate. Sweet. Wait, wait. I didn't even know Sweet Willie was here. What what that had to do with me? What that got to do with me? Sweet Willie couldn't concentrate. Sweet Willie said that you were making some noise. <laughs> you done you done drove Sweet Willie out. <laughs> Cause Sweet Willie couldn't concentrate with all that crying. <laughs> you know Sweet Willie always talked to girl. Don't bring your children now like I help. Because your children always crying. You don't give them pot of fire. That's what happened. You don't give them pot of fire on Monday. I don't know why you buy the pot of fire because you don't lose it. You don't lose it at all. Pacifier be up there just laying on. <laughs> laying on. <laughs> now, look at this here. <laughs> look at this here. Now, if I'm going to operate in confidence, there is somebody in the earth that's full of God, that I'm going to meet them, that's going to allow me to function in this confidence for my future, for opposition, for things that's going to come to me. They are going to be my Jesus for my life. Everything that springs from them is Jesus distributed. Meaning they're not just doing stuff. They are Jesus distribution system for me. You understand this? You understand this? Being a Jesus distribution, it energizes people. It unlocks people. Virtue is connected to a, a encounter that you'll have with Jesus on the earth. That's what happened with the woman with Asia blood. She had an encounter with Jesus as a man on the earth. That's what happened to her. She had an encounter with Jesus as a man on the earth. You want to strive to be virtuous. Virtue is the glory realm for a woman. Virtue is the glory realm for a woman's mind. Philippians chapter four says that the thoughts that you should think are pure, lovely, virtuous, and of a good report. Pure, lovely, just, virtuous. The Bible even talked about having virtuous thoughts. Wow. It told you that your thoughts should be a virtue. 
Imagine this, saints, that there is a realm of virtuous thoughts, which shows you that the virtuous woman is also the mental woman. Her mentality is anointed. Her mentality is free. Her mentality is blessed. Her mentality is angelic. Angels can whisper to her with more effectiveness than demons. Your relationship with your man of God is a beautiful idea of God. Because the anointing on the man will protect you in moments when the man is not even actively speaking with you. You can't see him. You don't even know where he is. But you know where he is. Because spiritually, you're at the same location in which he functions because his teachings and his words seated in you the location of dominion and power and grace and victory. You'll hear his voice. Remember, it was Samuel that heard the voice of Eli. Because him and Eli was one. He heard the voice of Eli. God spoke to him out of the voice of Eli. So when Samuel heard the voice of God, he came to Eli and said, did you call me? Eli said, no. He came back again. Did you call me? Eli said, no. Finally, after some time, Eli said, tell the Lord, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. The Lord will speak to you out of the voice of your divine connection. The Lord will speak to you out of the voice of your divine connection. You'll hear your man of God talking to you in moments where you're angry, in moments where you're offended. Don't become offended as a woman, never. The minute that you become offended, the, the minute you become vicious. And that's not you. That's not you. Avoid offense at all costs. And, and you say, Prophet, how do I do that? Mind your business. Don't be nosy. This is the secret to not getting offended. Saints, like I said, I don't study videos that talk about me. I don't even know if people is talking about me. I I don't study stuff like that because that's not a part of my assignment. Therefore, it's not, it's not needful for me to pay attention to it. I mind my own business. My assignment every day is to make Jesus happy. That's my assignment every day. Once I do that, I'm through. I don't care if you're mad or not. You can be mad all you want. You're just going to be mad. You ain't going to have no gasoline draws. You're going to go down there with no draws. You're going to be a porno star in hell. No draws at all. Every day that's my assignment. Your assignment is to make your, your divine king happy. Your assignment is to serve your man of God. If God 
gives you the privilege of having a prophet. Your job is to serve your prophet. Some of you are, you serve me in so many ways. You serve me with sowing. You serve me with loyalty. You serve me with disconnecting from people that you know are my enemies. Some of y'all, I ain't even got to tell you nothing. You, you will disconnect from somebody just because you know I disconnected from them. That pleases God. That pleases God. Because if you're in connection with a snake, your potential, your future is snaky. I ultimately become what I'm connected to. I ultimately become what I'm connected to. I ultimately become what I'm connected to. If I'm connected to a failing person, I'm going to become a failing person. I ultimately become what I'm connected to. Wrong presence destroys the strong presence of God. You caught that? Wrong presence destroys the strong presence of God. Wrong presence destroys strong presence. People with parasite natures, they will rob the life of God from you slowly. To the degree that you won't even see that the life of God is moving until there's a day, most times, where you get defeated by that and you didn't even see that coming. You become a reject yourself. Remember God told Saul that he rejected him now. Now Saul was a reject from the very same place that he was anointed. That's powerful stuff there. The same place where he was anointed, he was anointed by God, he was rejected by God. Because he didn't handle the anointing of it correctly. You understand this? So, always know that whoever does not have your anointing is the person that Satan will use to bring you out of it. False friendship. False friendship. Look at Lucifer trying to talk to Michael in the book of Jude. Look at that. The Bible said he up there telling so he wanted the body of Moses. He talking to Michael like everything cool. Michael said, the Lord rebuke you. <laughs> Lucy was trying to, uh, trying to sneak in like, like, hey, come, hey, Michael, what's up? <laughs> Michael. Michael, let me, see, let me talk to you. <laughs> Look at Moses right there looking all juicy down there, guy. Give me, that, give me that body of Moses. Look at Lucifer was a homosexual. <laughs> that was going to give him the body of Moses. <laughs> Lucy is a homosexual. A boondike. She a boondike. She all of that. And Lucy lost us. I don't know what. She... A transgender, all of that. She Caitlyn and she Caitlyn and Roderick at the same time. She both of them. We talk about the Hittite, but we don't talk about the Morphodite. <laughs> all of them. We got the Hittite, the the Niggerite, the Wigtite, <laughs> Wigtite, Wigtite. 
You going to you going to the nail shop looking like this? That's a wig tied, wig tied, wig tied, wig tight. You ever you ever got your hair done? They done braid your braids back too, too strong. You get your hair done, they done they done braid your back too strong. You up there? You got a headache? You trying to play it off? Everybody say I like your hair. You like thank you. Why that look? Why you gotta hit the Sinead and tell her thank you? Hey, why you why you do your mouth like a shark? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so and so your hairline start back there because they break. They braided it so tight that they took off the roots of your edges right there, so your hairline started way back. No, because they be braided too tight. And you can't tell them nothing. They be squeezing your head and you want your hair done, but they be hurting you. You be like, ah. You be trying to send them signals to let them know to calm down. Ah. But they don't get budged by it. You notice that, right? You notice when they're doing your hair and they, they, they pull it, they still don't get even, ah. You're hoping that they'll stop, but they just do it, ah. Ah. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then there's always that one little girl that's always <laughs> asking them. <laughs> there's always <laughs> there's always one little girl always asking her mama, Mom, what, what, what is she doing there? Why is she talking like that? You be like, ah, 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 <laughs> and they still doing your hair as tight as possible. You be trying to send them smoke signals and let them know I gotta pee. I, I, can I use the restroom after this? Ah, yeah, you can use the restroom after this. I got two more braids though. Let me finish the two more braids. I got appointment at five. Since the person that's doing your hair always got an appointment after you, they lying. <laughs> Their appointment is they done made plans after they got that money. <laughs> Look, they will have a decoy come in there. One of their girlfriends that they about to go shop with. They come in there talking, you ready to do my hair? Yeah, I'm ready to do your hair. When y'all leave, they go to the mall. Both of them get up out the chair together. They out. You think that's one of her customers? Then look, look. If you, if you, if you at that nail place, you at that hair place for long enough, you find out that that same decor girl always come in at the right time. Like she here again? Yeah, she comes. She said she need a touch up. You gonna give me a touch up today? She sit down in the seat, but she really just the decoy. So that you can feel like your hairdresser had an appointment. That appointment was to get that money. Since your hair be looking all pretty, but your hair be all back like this, you be laying down like this, like your eyes be open while you're sleeping. You ever see somebody with their eyes open when they're sleeping and you're there having a full-blown conversation? Yeah, he going to unfollow me, man. You know what I'm saying? He gonna unfollow me and everything. Yeah, I, t I told him about himself, and you just up there laying down like this here. Cause the eye can't close, cause cause the the braid done <laughs> put it all the way back. <laughs> and then the person sleeps, so they start rolling their eyes. What you gotta roll your eyes for? I'm just telling you, he unfollowed me. That's all I'm telling you. Why why you always gotta be nasty about this? Because, because the whole, look, you ain't even got to get no Botox. 
Because when they pitch your head all the way back, they take out all them crow feet right there. They call that crow feet. <laughs> then they take out all that crow feet right there, all that crow feet. They call that crow feet. When you got lines right there, they call that crow feet. You got lines right there, crow feet. That's the feet of the crow. Crow feet. Crow feet. All that crow feet gone because when they pitch it, when they put their hair back there, they evaporate all the lines. It's called Botox because your hairline then went back and braided too tight. Saints, I be feeling bad for them women in the club when they fighting. Cause they, your wig, if your wig ain't glued on strong, they just pull it off and all that the, the braids that's way back there like them Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Be on <laughs> Somebody throw a piece of grape in Stevie mouth. <laughs> somebody, somebody, hey, I'm about to lob it. I'm about to lob it. <laughs> Now, look at this here. Doggone it. <laughs> Function from rest. You got to function from a restful place. Don't let your mind think too much about life because they'll destroy your present inspiration. Inspiration is God giving you momentum to finish your assignment. Inspiration is God giving you all to slip out of dangerous Thinking patterns. Inspiration is God giving you all to, to slip out of dangerous thinking patterns. Inspiration will decide whether or not you are of an excellent spirit like Daniel was. You want to stay inspired as a woman. You can have five minutes where you pray in the spirit. You praise God. And always remember this. Do spiritual things with full focus. It's very powerful what I'm telling you. If you read the Bible and you're not fully focused, you didn't read the Bible. What you did was you stepped into the spirit realm and never picked God. So watch this. You in the spirit realm, a demon can recruit you. Do you know that there's people that go on a fast and start smoking again? Or they start doing something strange again. Why? Because the spiritual thing you did stepped you into the spirit realm, but you never fully focused. So you never picked the Lord while you was in the spirit realm. You are a free agent. You become a recruit. So if I'm reading the word and I'm distracted while I'm reading the word, I'm in the spirit realm. So a demon can come entice me and say, let me give you something better than this because you ain't focused on this. No way. Let's do this. Da, da, da. Now it becomes temptation. What's happening? I'm in the spirit realm. I become recruited by a demon because I never focused on the Lord. That's why I said I'll keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. Isaiah 26, 3. Your mind got to be stayed on him. So focused. So imagine that, saints. When you're not focused, you can become a demonic recruit. You need to be focused. You don't need to be just in the spirit realm. 
Because the seven more wicked spirits are still trying to access you. You got to make an intentional decision. Have intentional focus. While you're moving in my anointing, always pray for wisdom a lot. And, and when I say pray for wisdom, I want you, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive sound wisdom from you. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 2, verse 7, and say that he storeth up sound wisdom. Father, I receive sound wisdom from you. Father, I receive sound wisdom. I receive sound wisdom. Look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2. Look what it say. Watch this in verse uh, 1, chapter 2, Proverbs. My son, if you will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that you would incline your ear unto wisdom, Look what it say, hide my commandments. See, you got to protect what God is telling you. Don't let this stuff get out. Don't give your what is holy to dogs, nor cast your pearl among swine. Don't take the valuable information that God revealed to you and just carelessly reveal deep things. Let me tell you something. It's okay for you to tell people about Jesus. But let me tell you something. Watch how you reveal Christ. I want you to see this. Watch how you reveal Christ. This is one powerful thing that I'm telling you here. You could tell people about Jesus, but watch how you reveal Christ. The anointed one and his anointing. Remember, Jesus is the opportunity to come into. Christ is a realm where the person, the power, the privilege is made manifest to another degree. This is powerful. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. Be cautious about how you unveil Christ. Because not everybody, after they hear Jesus, will respond correctly to access Christ, the anointed one and his anointed. I am a anointed one and his anointed. I am a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I am in the same position as him. I am ruling and reigning with him. I am a king just like Jesus is king. Be careful how you reveal that to people. Cause we don't want their dragon tail's breath blowing all in our face, smelling like old cigarette nicotine. Somebody get them their good and plenty. Smelling like Marlboros. Marlboros. You ever smell somebody, they smell like a cigarette all the time? I was inside the store today. That nigga about to smell like a cigarette. He wasn't even smoking. How you got the cigarette smell on you, brother? You, you ain't even got no cologne on you. A woman was right there up there smelling all that cigarette. She just okay with it. Smell like. That's why your blood pressure high. Smells, all oh, just smell like it. Take a shower, smell like it. It's, all, it's finished, it's done. It's through, it's done, went down. It still smell like it. Come on, man. Come on, man. You smell like smoke, man. 
smell like smoke. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, uh, uh. Smell like smoke. I can't. Come on, man. Come on, man. To just walk past and you got to hold your nostrils. You got to hold your nostrils. Trying to tell you that right now. This is a, come on, saints. People up there, you up there, you got to avoid them because they smell just like the cigarette. They ain't, even, they ain't even doing no cigarette smoke. They up there sitting up there shopping, trying to get a sweatshirt, trying to get a thong. Why you got to smell like cigarette, man? You done, you done, you done funk master flex the whole place. Done funk master flex the whole place. Now, look at Proverbs chapter 2, verse Seven. Look at Proverbs chapter uh, two, verse two, rather. Incline your ear unto wisdom. And apply your heart to understanding. See, you got to make an application to understand deep things. It's saying incline your heart to understanding. Now, look what it says here. Then it says, If you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. See, you got to cry out for knowledge. Saints, let me tell you something. You ain't got to cry out for no financial miracle. Some of you are, are a financial miracle. You just need to learn how to sow. And be a steward of money. You ain't got to beg God for no provision. Just sow your way out. But you got to cry for knowledge. You got to know what seed God asking you for. You got to know what seed is going to break open the floodgates of finances in your life. You got to know what seed is going to bring you into having financial investors. People that's going to invest in you financially. You got to know. So it said, cry out after knowledge. This is the knowledge of how to deal with people. This is the knowledge of how to pray. The knowledge of how to focus. The knowledge of how to avoid traps, booby traps. You don't need to be accessible to uh, people of your past. You don't need to be accessible to people that uh, God took out of your life years ago. Cry after knowledge. Meaning passionately put your energy into possessing this because it's not just going to be obvious. It's not going to be automatic. It's going to come to you According to your pursuit of it. Cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding. That means that you don't just get understanding. You're going to have to tell the Lord, please, Lord, I'm asking you. Not even, not even please. You ain't begging, not that type of please, but please in the form of reverence. Give me understanding from you. I want to see it like you see it. I want to know it like you know it. Saints, look how stupid our generation is. Some of you all said this on your testimony. Ask the Holy Spirit and he'll show you who Prophet Joshua is. People don't want to hear that. Because they don't want to hear from the Holy Spirit. They want to hear from hatred and jealousy. See, here's the dumb generation we in. Full of stupid, <laughs> retarded people. If somebody is telling you to ask God about somebody and it makes you mad, you got a demon. Because 
The only source of truth is not, the source of truth is not my observation. That's real powerful. The source of truth is not my observation. The source of truth is not what I see. The source of truth is from Jesus himself. So if I'm ever going to come into truth, it's not because I observe something or I perceive something. It's because I'm in a communication with Jesus and because he is the truth, he's going to show me what truth is. He's going to teach me what truth is. But see, our generation, when they done decided that they want to crucify Jesus, they don't want nothing else that's sound-minded concerning to turn them away because it's already what their offense and their hatred has chosen to do. But see, I applaud and I'm happy about those of you all that's following me because obviously you've been listening to me. Whether it be weeks, months, years now, you've been listening to me and you took what I said and you did it. Only P. Bolotti got more head than he got body got a problem with the truth. If you're pointing people to go to Jesus, go to the Holy Spirit and find out, and you mad, that show you got demons on the inside of you. Why you can't go to the Lord? The Lord knows who everybody is. So if you're being introduced to go to the Lord and that makes you mad. Why, why are we not hiding? If we needed you to believe in us just because we're trying to get you to believe, we wouldn't lead you to go ask God and make your decision. How dumb that one. Mike Tyson singing how dumb that one. How dumb that one. Then twins. My do 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 do. Three to three to three. How dumb that one. I ain't saying twat, I said something else. How twum, ta Then twin twa 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 Twa, twa. You know he got finished. No, how twa, twa, twa. How twa, twa, twa. How twa, twa, twa. How twa, twa. What you want for me? Uh, let me finish. I got to finish it now. How to it, twa, twa. How to it, twa, twa. How to it, twa, twa. How to it. What do you want for me? Twa. What do you want for me? Twa. <laughs> Now, look at Proverbs chapter 2. <laughs> look at Proverbs chapter 2. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> <laughs> you, 
You need to go to the cash register. I want a McDouble and a McNasty, a double McNasty, a Big Shack. <laughs> and, 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 and when you get to the window, and say, what? What do you want for me? It's five ninety nine. What do you want for me? And just stare at her. Don't don't even give her no change or nothing. What do you, what do you want for me? What do you want? Saints, they always got the ugly people working at the food section. She watch this here. She watch you 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 got an appetite. You about to eat your food. Look, she you get up to the second window. The first window was I. Right. Somebody look all right. You want some ketchup on y'all? You want some ketchup on y'all? What you want on y'all? You want some mustard? You want some mustard? What you want? What you want? And she's spitting all over your food like a top lip just... And you be having your cup. You be trying to cover your cup. All right, give me my cup. Come on, come on. You be trying to close the bag real quick. Oh, yeah, he got the fire. He got the fire here. And then you be mad when they miss the order because then, then the food is naked. The food is <laughs> the food is naked. It don't got no bag on it or nothing like that. So she bring the product. To the, here you go right here. Here you go. This is yours right here. You ask her two fives. You want the ketchup? You want the ketchup? Here you the ketchup. They always got the ugly one work. Now, here's my experiences. When I was small, I used to notice that there was always lesbians serving the food. So I used to get a little nervous. I'm like... Do we got print on my food or what? Because <laughs> I just need to know Jesus. Am I supposed to eat it? I know you said bless the food, but did they touch it? Or what did they touch before they touched this? Uh, did, did uh, Was it this or that? What Did it touch this here or what it was? Because, you know, it looked like, you know what I'm saying, it looked like they patted down or something like that. I don't know what they do. Maybe they went to the uh, the, the gothic store or something like that. I don't know what, is it okay for me to taste it or something like that? Or what, it, what you want me to do? And saints then, when you go up to the win, when you go up to the window, when, when, it, when, uh, when the brother is the homosexual that, that pin the, the, the food up is different. See, that was the female. When the brother come, you ask for some milk and cookies. He, he do like that. Here's your milk and cookies. Here's your milk and cookies. Here, here. You want two of them? You, I'll give you three for one the dollar. You ask for three for one the dollar. I like your eyes. You get. You ask for three for one the dollar. I gave you. You, you say you like crap for the dollar too. I give you three for one the dollar. <laughs> and you, you be trying to be serious without laughing. All right, thank you. <laughs> So I said, why you laughing? I like when you're blushing. <laughs> why you blushing? <laughs> Somebody twisting. <laughs> you blushing. <laughs> we gonna get to twitching. Now, come on, brother. I, bro, can you give me some ketchup? Because you getting out of hand now. You becoming disrespectful. I ain't come off for all this. <laughs> I ain't come for this discussion. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3. It says, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hid treasures. Let me, let me show you this. It said, seek her as silver. So you need to go after understanding and wisdom as if it's money. As if this is your livelihood, as if this is going to cause you to to live the way that God wants you to live. You're supposed to go after wisdom and understanding as if if you don't get it. You're going to die. If you don't get it. You're going to die. You should be going after wisdom. As if this is going to be your food, your daily bread, your water. If you don't get it, you ain't going to make it. That's how you should go after wisdom.
You should go after wisdom in a state of urgency, a state of emergency. Because money will come to you when you are full of wisdom. Look what it say. You shall find, you shall understand the fear of the Lord. I'm going to talk about this another time. And the knowledge of God, see? The fear of the Lord, the knowledge of God. I'm going to talk about this another time. Because a lot of people don't know how to fear the Lord because they have not sought the Lord for wisdom and understanding. So they don't know how to fear the Lord. Watch this. Look at verse 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom... Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. So the Lord gives us wisdom. He's the source of this wisdom. And out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. What I want you to see is say out of his mouth. That's not only his personal mouth, but that's his personal prophet as well. Out of his mouth also means that God is going to give you a prophet that will speak to you and give you knowledge and give you understanding about things that was difficult for you to comprehend. And you see, I do that all the time. I give you understanding about stuff that, that might, might have seemed like out of your reach for you to comprehend. Look at verse 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. Look what it say. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. Did you forget that the Bible said that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just? So watch this. You got to get the wisdom that been laid up before you can possess the wealth that been laid up. He going to tell you what seed to sow. He going to tell you about your financial instruction because this is the sound wisdom that he laid up for your wealth that been laid up to be released to you. He going to tell you when to sow, how to sow, how much to sow. You unlock the wisdom that been laid up to unlock the money that been laid up. You're catching this? Happy Thanksgiving in Jesus' name.